What's up guys, uh, we're going to talk about how you're going to run citations now for your zombie apocalypse project. Um, so let's take a look at the presentation that I threw together that's like an eighth done. So we have a title slide here, we've got our, our title up there. Oh, and the picture that I found on Creative Commons. And how do you know I found it on Creative Commons? Because we did that in the last video. Now take a look at the bottom, um, real simple rules for how you're going to cite pictures. Uh, in quotation marks here is the title of the image, the image was titled Zombies. So quotation marks around the title from, in my case this came from a website, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, I have no idea where .fi is from, maybe Fiji. Um, so this is where I found the image down here, and uh, for you that may end up being from Flickr or some other place. Uh, and then the following, the next thing I'm going to look at, or I'm going to sort is, or the next thing I'm going to say is who it is by. So uh, there was no image credit given, so this is by unknown. Again, if it's on Flickr for you, you'll have a, uh, a username to go there. Now, uh, what about citing actual facts within your bibliography, or excuse me, citing actual facts within your presentation? Check it out. Uh, one of the places that my group decided was we were going to hide was at a Walmart in Eureka, California. Now, why in the heck would we want to go there? Uh, they have a lot of food. There are binoculars at uh, the Walmart, and so we could see the zombies coming. Eureka is a small town. It's only 100 miles from Trinity National Forest, which would be a spectacular place to hide because it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, now, what are the negative things about this? Well, it's located near a major highway 101, so there would be a heck of people that could get in and out of Eureka. And there's a college there, and college students are known to be way, way, way unpredictable. So, uh, yeah, that might be another reason why it would not be a good place to hang out. Again, this is really rudimentary. You guys are going to go into way more depth with this. But the one thing I want to point out is not that my pros and cons are bad. It's these source 1, source 2, source 3, source 4, source 5, source 6, source 7. What do all of those things stand for? That's a great question. Let's take a look at the next slide, which is my bibliography slide. You'll notice here where it says Source 1. Oh, wait, didn't I reference Source 1 before? Oh, yeah, Source 1. So how did I know there's a Walmart in Eureka, California? From this website. Awesome. How did I know there was food at Walmart? Oh, I, that's the Walmart website where it talks about, oh, groceries. That's useful. Okay, cool. Um, source 3. Uh, how did I know they have binoculars? Oh, because I looked and found binoculars on the Walmart website. Awesome. How did I know how many people lived in Eureka? Well, I googled it. This is the link to tell me how many people live in Eureka. Um, how did I know how far it was? Oh, well, I entered that into Google Maps, and that's Source 5. So check it out. This information I got from Source 5 shows up right here. Okay. Uh, now, the one thing I want you to notice is you've got a source number, so Source 5, period, and then just a website. And this is the way that we want you to cite stuff for now. Again, this is kind of citations light. Um, for this project. So anytime you use source one, you would put a source one after that. So if this information and like say maybe this information also came from source one, you could just write source one, source one, and just make sure those th that the place you got this information matches up on your bibliography with the website uh, that you got it from. Cool? Cool. You guys got this. Now go make sweet how to survive this or where to survive the zombie apocalypse projects.